Happy Halloween everybody this is Karen and I thought I would just do a very quick sketch pad demonstration of how to create a rotational symmetry. So we're going to start with an equilateral triangle. First I'm going to draw a segment and then I'm going to use my compass tool or my circle tool and create two circles that use this segment as the radius meaning they're congruent. So I'm going to start with the end point as the center and go out to the other end point as the radius and now I'm going to create a second circle with the other end point as the center moving out to the second end point and now I have two congruent circles because they have the same radius. I'm going to use that to construct my triangle. I'm going to start at the end point of the radius. I'm going to go to the intersection of those two circles and come back to the other end point and close my triangle. This is now an equilateral triangle because it is made of three radius radii of the circles that we know are congruent so it's equilateral. I'm going to turn that, hide my circles, don't want to delete them because my triangle goes away. And Let's make our triangle just a little bit bigger so we can work with it. I'm going to use rotational symmetry to create my tessellation and my tessellation I want the pieces to fit together so I'm going to first construct the original piece using my polygon tool which is a nice tool in Sketchpad 5 because you can create vertices that are so close together that it looks curved. So I'm going to start at the vertex of one of my triangle sides and I'm going to think in Halloween I'm going to make a kind of a ghost so there's my ghost's face and we're going to come along maybe make an arm for my ghost kind of a creepy looking little hand and perhaps my ghost needs a foot and all I'm doing is clicking and moving my mouse to create and I'm going to close it and when I click double click it closes my polygon so this little piece right here is my polygon now I don't need this side anymore because in a sense I've cut it out if you've ever done this with paper and pencil um, and usually index cards I used to do this with you would have the students actually cut it out in tape so now I want to take this cutout part and rotate it around the other two sides of my triangle so I'm going to choose my point of rotation simply by double clicking and now I'm going to tell the computer what I want it to rotate and I don't want it to rotate those sides so go to my transform menu and I hit rotate and it's kind of going in the wrong direction so let's change that degree a bit and so I'm going to change it to negative 60 and that moves my cutout to this other side and that looks good to me and I need to rotate one more time to get this third side in there so I'm going to change my point of rotation and rotate one more time and now I have my third side and that looks good so I'm going to hide these two sides of my original triangle and now I have the shape kinda looks like a ghost really nice foot going on here over here we have some weird overlap so maybe I can change things about a bit and that's a great thing about constructing things that are copies of each other rotations the original moves all of them well I guess we're gonna have to stay happy with that so we're good with that so the next step is let's add some design so this looks like his foot his hand maybe he needs an eye so we're gonna go get an eye first actually let's color it in and again here's another great feature of the polygon tool I want to color this shape in and I didn't want to color it in before because of the way I rotated I now want just this interior so I'm gonna simply use my polygon tool that's interior only and basically follow along all my points and create this interior of my ghost or creature for Halloween now I'm simply following all the points and when I get back to the beginning it will close in my shape and when you're working with tessellations or any kind of kind of art design with kids that they're going to be making copies of an original you want to always try to color the original first because then your copies are colored you don't have to do it later for to each copy if you do it to the original first then you have the interior and you can change the interior and not have to go around and trace the points again for each copy so doing it to the original is a lot easier which is what we're doing here we're almost done and right now it is aqua which is not a great color for a ghost let's admit 
So once I actually create the interior, I'm going to change that color. So now I'm done. I've got my interior done. And now let's actually change that interior. We're thinking Halloween, so all I'm doing is right clicking. And first, one thing we can do is make that color a lot darker. And now let's actually change the color. I think the color should be, let's go with dark. Well, that's a little too dark. So I want to go back to right click and change it a little bit. It went a little too dark there because I'm not going to be able to see anything. So kind of a gray ghost. And let's add some features to my gray ghost. And one of the things I can do here is these points are all very large. So I can go up to the display and go to point style and make these dot like so now really all I'm seeing is the outline of my ghost which is kind of nice so let's add some features to this ghost I think the ghost needs a nice eye not a very big eye so and let's add a mouth it's, it's not a happy ghost we don't want a happy ghost it's Halloween and let's add let's use the polygon tool and add an arm here kind of a and remember just the more points you collect the more curved your polygon looks so there's my ghost's arm so we've simply created an arm and I think that eye needs to be a bit bigger so let's click that and here's a nice thing about sketchpad 5 you can make your points very large so there that's an eye so there's my simple ghost relatively simple so now I want to actually do the rotational tessellation here. So I need a point of rotation to rotate my shape around. So we're going to choose up here by his head. And now we're going to actually rotate our shape. So we're going to select the whole ghost and go up to transform and rotate. And negative 60 is putting it in the back. I could change that to 60. And that seems to work. So let's do that. And let's make another copy of my ghost. So now I have two copies of my ghosts and let's move that down so we can see it a little bit better. Now I don't want them all to be the same so now because I've already colored the interior from the original if I select the interior and right and go up to display I can change the color. So let's change that color to orange and let's change this second ghost to maybe kind of a white or gray so we're gonna go up to display color and let's maybe gray we have a gray ghost so now I have three more Halloween type colors but I'm not quite done with my rotational tessellation so let's I don't need to change the point of rotation but now I want to rotate all three of these so we're gonna choose all of them I think I got all of it. it's a little hard here because they're kinda of big there we go Doo -doo. And I don't want to accidentally rotate my um, description. So now I've got the whole thing highlighted, same point of rotation. Now I'm going to hit rotate, and it looks like I only have one. And that's because I'm only going 160. So if I've got three of them that are each rotated 60, three times 60 is 180. So let's change that. And there's all three of my ghosts. And now I have this pretty cool rotational ghost thing. And I can change it, which is kind of neat. I can grab a point in here. And all of them will change because it is a rotation symmetry thing. So you can just have a lot of fun with this and make some more copies. And maybe we can rotate a different way. But this is just a very quick example of my rotational symmetry tessellation. Happy Halloween!